Chances are, if you're watching this video, you've asked yourself the question, why am I here? What is this for? Who am I? And what is the reason for existence itself? You've probably come across some very compelling viewpoints about the meaning of life, the reason why we're here, and the need for us as souls to have deeply enriching experiences so that the universe gets to understand itself more deeply. But let's go down a rabbit hole today and talk about a different perspective. There is a common denominator that every human being in existence has ever experienced, and that is the inability to truly know that reason for being. Because reason in itself is a paradox. The more that we zoom into reason, the more that reason dissipates into nothingness. And yet nothingness also has within it the reason for being. Nothingness and reason are two polarities that exist on an entangled spectrum of consciousness. In order for there to be reason, there has to be nothing, as nothing gives rise to the reason that reason also identifies with the nothing. If this is confusing you, don't worry, let's go a layer deeper into this. Nothingness is an uncomfortable idea because it implies that there is nothing to attach to. There is a pure state of consciousness, and within it is a void. It's like you find yourself in a vacuum space in which everything is uncertain, everything is dark, and yet everything is perfectly meaningful. That darkness can be very threatening to some people because within that darkness is a need to come to terms with who we are and with everything that exists within us. To look within is to take that darkness into account and to think about what it is teaching us about ourselves. Within that darkness is the reason for our being. Because the deeper that we look into reason, the deeper we can also find that that reason dissipates into nothingness. And in that void, in that nothingness, is also the reason for everything. Because when we can look into the eyes of nothingness, we can find ourselves. We can find soul. We can find the truth in non-attachment and in the sheer presence and essence of being. Therein lies who we are. And most of us have no idea that that's where we should be looking. I want you to think about this experience of going into the inner void. The state of the zero point that exists within you, just like it does on a cosmic scale. Imagine you're going into the quantum vacuum of your own soul. You're having to look deep within into a point where you can no longer attach to anything located externally of you. The only thing that exists is you and everything that you feel deeply inside of you. In that point is sheer truth because it's sheer knowing that allows you to have that experience of darkness and to be honed into it. To be in that darkness is to be fully embodied in your own state of being. It's to move into your center and to allow that core experience of reality to become your truth. When you are as one with yourself, you are embodying that darkness. And that darkness is also where the light of consciousness begins to shine through. Many people are actually extremely afraid of the dark. They're afraid of being alone and they're afraid of what the darkness holds. When I'm talking about the darkness now, I'm not talking about dark entities, dark magic, dark things that you may be perceiving has a negative connotation to it. What I'm talking about is the dark shell of our being that we don't want to look at. The shadow side, the personal unconsciousness. Within this unconscious aspect of self is really the wholeness of our being. Because the only way that we can tap into the whole truth is to find that other half, the dark side, that is also illuminating the light side. What our conscious mind is not able to pick up is also an important aspect of our consciousness, which we need to hone into in order to understand who we are. The problem that many human beings face is that we don't know how to embrace this darkness because our entire life is an attempt to escape it and the truth that it holds. We find ourselves emerging from nothingness when we're just born into this world, and from that state, we start accumulating light aspects of the self to fill our conscious mind with reason for being that doesn't even help us understand the reason for being, which is to go back into that void to understand our fundamental truth of self. Many self-help teachings and practices attempt to bring someone into a state of understanding the universe at large and reality as something perfectly meaningful and you as a special being that has meaningful experiences. However, in this attachment to the idea that everything is meaningful, we can actually lose meaning. So here we can go down a really deep rabbit hole thinking about the paradox of reason itself. And are we really so special at the end of the day? Every human is having a very similar experience in that we're all here to understand this reason for being. 
by attaching to beingness in many different ways. We're all doing different things, thinking different thoughts, choosing different jobs, choosing different relationships to fill our lives with meaning. However, deep down, we're all just the same kind of soul, the same consciousness choosing to embody itself in different forms to understand reason in the many different diverse expressions of experience. Through our life, we seek to escape nothingness because the state of not knowing ourselves is the most uncomfortable one of all. However, in trying to create something of ourselves, we often choose reason in the wrong things. We choose to fill the void by just attaching to different interactions and people and things that make us feel like we're more whole. Like we know ourselves through our materialistic possessions and through everything that we've created of ourselves. But that never allows us to truly understand the void and what it is that is within it that we are being urged to see. It's incredible how many people have all the money in the world that they want, yet are completely lonely. How many people have many friends, many connections, even fame, and are still feeling very alone inside. Because there is no correlation between how much you have materialistically to how much you're feeling inside. There's no way to create more substance in existence through just the acquisition of more. That is a false interpretation of what it means to become happy and fulfilled within yourself. Attachments never allow the self to become fully fulfilled because in trying to cling more to things externally, you're just losing that connection to the sacred void within you. We can think of the sacred void within us as the mystery of our own souls, the enigmatic nature of that essence that all of us can feel through the voice of our intuition, through the subtle urges that we get from our heart and from the deep knowing that we feel to do certain things, to be with certain people, to find certain intentions in life, to orient our awareness and to keep us moving forward. And yet by discouraging these thoughts, we find ourselves going in other directions. We find ourselves losing meaning in that deep state of inner wholeness because we just want to feel that emptiness. The difficulty associated with finding meaning in our emptiness is that it can be very painful to look into the void. All healing must emanate from our willingness to embrace that darkness, to move into that void by wanting to see ourselves in the dark shadow aspects of our being in order to understand the full nature of who we are. There must be a daring attempt on our conscious mind's behalf in order to understand its other half's expression. Think of this as the alchemical marriage within the self. We must be willing to reconcile the conscious and subconscious mind in order to understand really who we are. We must be able to love the shadow into full acceptance in order to feel like we are truly content as an individual. If we keep repressing our shadow and we don't allow the light of consciousness to be shown on our subconscious mind, there's always going to be a need to find expressions of our shadow in our day-to-day -day life. There's always going to be a quest for more, more encounters, more people, more things, more situations which make us feel more meaningful simply because we are not choosing to address the underlying meaninglessness of our experience that we're feeling deep down. Many times the more meaningful we feel life is on the external expression of it, the more meaningless we feel our soul is on an internal level. Because ultimately we are always choosing soul, or ego. We're choosing to place our focus only on the external aspect of our lives where we choose attachment, possession, acquisition, and that quest for something more as opposed to looking within and understanding what it is that our soul truly wants. The first step to healing, understanding, and knowingness is being willing to reconnect with ourselves in this intimate way. The intimate encounter with our own souls can be the most difficult and painful thing that we've ever had to experience. Because in doing so, we invite this darkness in, allowing all of our shadow aspects to come up to the surface to be accepted. With that can often be the experience of shame and guilt, fear, and different forms of discomfort because you start to recognize how consciously you are discouraging yourself from being loved. You are discouraging yourself from being seen. And so when the conscious mind decides to love its dark side, like a parent loving its child that it has not been acknowledging fully, there begins to be the merger of these two opposites. There is the merger of the subconscious into the conscious mind, which allows for the void to be welcomed. When we go into the void, we find the mysteries of ourselves unveiled. We begin to experience the things that we have not been actively seeing and identifying with. We can feel different desires and urges come up, different abilities that want to be seen. 
we may feel certain repressed memories and traumas come up that need to be accepted. We may start to experience different memories that we can't even consciously associate with because those things are still leading to different manifestations in our subconscious mind. For as long as that lives in the subconscious, it will continually be expressed and mirrored. In the external world because all of life is a mirror of consciousness. Everything exists for us to eventually come back to the realization that the outer world is a reflection of us. And so if we do not manage this feeling of the void within us, we are going to fill that void through more external drama, chaos, and disharmony. We are both the creator and the creation. We are both the problem and the solution. In order to understand how everything is mirrored within ourselves, we must come to terms with this void. We must be willing to feel our own emptiness, our own pain, our own disapproval and disappointment. We must be willing to see everything that we have done wrong, and everything that we do right, and everything that we feel deeply that we don't wish the world to know about us. Ultimately, this comes down to authenticity and deciding to allow the shadow to be an integrated aspect of our being, because the shadow is not a negative expression of us. It's a part of us that wants to be seen and wants to be loved. And when it is, we start to feel like that shadow can actually give fuel for transformation of even more positive aspects of our psyche. If you are interested in this experience of learning to associate with the inner void, you can go as far as to try a darkness retreat. Dark retreats are one of the most powerful ways to fully come to terms with this darkness within you. Think about how intense this is. Finding yourself in a dark room for five days without seeing any light, without having any access to anything that can possibly distract you. What this experience allows you to do is to completely reset your neurochemical balance and to find yourself in pure, isolated, connection to yourself. By learning to find yourself through no distractions and no ability to look outside of you, you can find the reason for your own suffering. Because you will be forced to look eye to eye with your own demons, with your own shadow, and with everything that you've been repressing that desperately wants to be seen. In that darkness, our own ego ceases to exist because the ego is sustained by observation. Just like the observer effect in quantum physics, the ego needs to have the light of consciousness or awareness or other people's perspectives shown on it in order for it to be revealed. Our ego is active during the light of day because we have to play this role. We have our chosen identity that we choose to come into this world with in order to show other people who we are. But as soon as we shut our eyes or go into that darkness, we can start to feel that our ego is disintegrating. There's nothing to observe us. We are purely real and alone with ourselves. There's a feeling that there is nothing to hide from other than us. We can run in life, but we can't hide from the realization of who we are. We can go looking for answers, but at the end of the day, we know that answer within. In the encounter with ourselves, we realize that all of our issues really are just projections of our need to escape ourselves. Reality can become an entire quest for meaning in the wrong things because we are so used to thinking that escaping our truth is the only way to find meaning. And that the reason for being is trying to find something that our being can become in order to find ourselves feeling more meaningful in the world. But the world is full of false projections. It's full of people who have also learned to neglect their void, neglect their shadow and the inner child desperate to be seen. And so in choosing to run into the world, to become someone that we think the world wants to see, we are just leaving ourselves in isolation. What we really want deep down is to go into that dark room, to stop chasing something, and to find the inner child to come back and reunite to. We want to find meaning for everything that's subconsciously stored within us, and the only way to do so is to find connections between external life and the internal reality. To look within and to really wonder why it is that we have been creating that disconnection, and who it is that we have been searching for all along. There may be no more meaning to search for in life at all. Maybe the only meaning is to realize that there's nothing worth escaping. There's nothing worth not seeing and not integrating because the reason for experience itself is to feel that truth of experience. And what better way to begin than by looking within yourself and learning what it is that light wants to shine on in the crevices of your own identity, where it is that you want to be understood, seen, loved, and accepted. How can you give comfort to your own soul to feel less alone without necessarily feeling like that aloneness needs to be dissipated by adding anything outside of you? You are already whole and that is the truth that may be painful to accept when you go deep within. It may be difficult to feel like you need to detach from things that have been making you feel like you are less alone by simply having them. The truth is, you are already exactly where you need to be. So look into the darkness to embrace the shadow and burst into the light.